Hi everyone, it is so great to be able to share with you today as we continue on in our series, Lockdown Emojis. I would just like to start by sharing with you some words from an old children's course. These words are rooted in truth and theology and are very profound. Here we go. The devil is a sly old fox. If I could catch him, I'd put him in a box. I'd lock the box and throw away the key for all the tricks he's played on me. I remember sitting in a congregation a few years ago and hearing some children sing this song and it was such a funny moment. I remember the children stamping their feet and the congregation laughing and it was a fun moment. But the reality is that we are in a battle with an enemy who deals in lies. And that's why I wanted to talk to you today about the mute button emoji. I believe that God the Father wants to just encourage us afresh to hit the mute button on the lies of the enemy and to saturate ourselves in his word and in his truth. You probably will have heard of the term fake news and I'm um, just going to avoid going into my Donald Trump impression here. Um, the Cambridge Dictionary defines fake news as this, false stories that appear to be news spread on the internet um, or using other media, usually created to influence views or to be shared as a joke. For Christians, for children of God, I believe that we have our own fake news to contend with and ours looks a little bit more like this. False stories that appear to be true spread in a child of God's mind, usually created to generate fear and diminish their healthy view of God, namely that he is bigger and more powerful than anything or anyone. It's really important that we know the enemy and know his strategies. In John 8, Jesus says that Satan is the father of lies and that he was a liar from the beginning. And in John 10, 10, Jesus says the thief comes only to steal, kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. So maybe if you hear nothing else today, you need to know this. Jesus came so that you could have abundant life and it's available to you today. There's a verse in 1 Peter 5, 8, and it says this, Stay alert, watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Stand firm against him and be strong in your faith. We have a, an amazing family friend, a very godly lady, and throughout the year she's always encouraged me. And she used to share this verse with, verse with me. And she'd said, Hannah, the enemy is a roaring lion. He roars and it's scary and it's loud. But the fact is, he has no teeth. <laughs> and that used to really encourage me because it, it almost gives you that visual picture of how powerless Satan is at the end of the day. Our God is more powerful. He's sovereign. He's good. And he is for us. And we need to be aware that Satan deals in lies. He doesn't want you to perceive how powerful God is. He doesn't want you to feel free. He doesn't want you to feel loved. He doesn't want you to know that you're forgiven. He doesn't want you to dream. He doesn't want you to hope. He doesn't want you to rest. He doesn't want you to thrive in your calling or your giftings. He doesn't want you to have healthy relationships with God or with other people. He wants you and he wants me to drown in a sea of what ifs. And if I'm really honest, I give him too much ground sometimes. I don't know about you, um, but I really feel like God is drawing me ever closer to be able to speak back to the lies of the enemy with the truth of his word. Jesus taught on many things and I have an infographic Bible and it lists the 50 top things that Jesus spoke on and there's a top five and this is the top five and um, th this is the five things that Jesus spoke on the most. Number one was the kingdom of God. Number two, father God. Number three, faith. And number four, money. And number five, Satan. And as I read this, as I was looking at the infographic Bible and looking at the little diagram, I thought, wow, you know, what would happen if we prioritized the things that Jesus prioritized and what he said? What would happen if we prioritized those things in our thought lives? What if we replaced anxious thoughts with thoughts of the kingdom? The fact that our kingdom cannot be shaken, that this kingdom is coming and that his kingdom will reign forever. What about the father? What if we meditated on thoughts about the father and how much he loves us and all the good plans that he has for us? What if our thoughts were faith filled? What if we set our minds on the things that were above, like it says to do in Colossians 3, 2? What if we fixed our eyes on what's true, honourable, noble, right, pure, lovely, admirable, excellent and worthy of praise, like Paul prompts us to in Philippians 4? 
in this season that we're in, it's important that we saturate ourselves in the truth of what God says about us and the truth of who we belong to. We need to know those truths more than ever now because the battle is fierce. There are times when I do struggle with this and I would call these days my ping pong days. It's funny how you can maybe look at other people and you think, oh, they're like a duck just sailing along the water. But underneath, the duck is going mad with its little feet. Um, and that can be like me. Sometimes I have my ping pong days and I'll describe it like this. My mum came in to me the other day and she said, Hannah, you're, you're on top form. You look like you're really getting on well with the day. And I said, no, mum, I'm having a ping pong day. And between my mum and I, we know what that means. Ping pong days are when we're having those days where it feels like there is a just an onslaught of negative thoughts from the enemy. It could be about myself. Um, it could be about um, calling. It could be about um, sin, it could be about um, just what's going on in the world around us but it could be all sorts but the enemy would just come in and just speak lies and try to overwhelm me and I call these days ping pong days because it's almost like the stuff is coming at me and I have to kind of refute it almost like a game of ping pong. I love ping pong and um, it's it's so fun whenever the game is at a nice steady pace and you can kind of cope with the ball coming at you but there are times when the game speeds up and it becomes more intense and you have to quickly refute the ball and get it back um, to the other side of the net and it becomes um, just more challenging. And it's a bit like that with the lies of the enemy. Sometimes they just come thick and fast and we can feel overwhelmed. And the only way that I can, the only way that you can overcome these lies and the things that are coming against us is to stand up to those truths, to or lies, to stand up to those lies, to identify the false truths, to identify the fake news and actually speak back with the word of God. And Jesus in the New Testament, he was tempted by Satan. He was tempted by the enemy. And the devil came to him and tried to tempt him with all sorts. And each time Jesus responded in this ping pong fashion, when the enemy came to him with something, Jesus responded with truth from scripture. And that's exactly how we need to respond. We need to remember that Jesus is the way, the truth and the life. We need to remember that the Holy Spirit is um, our spirit of truth and that he has come to guide us into all truth. We need to remember that Jesus, through the Holy Spirit, wants to sanctify us with his word. And if you're maybe like me, some days it's actually really hard to believe scripture and let the truth of it actually inform our behaviour. Sometimes it's easier to sit at the piano and sing a song and sing a melody out and sing that truth out and let that truth wash over uh, the lies. What is really powerful is to worship in spirit and in truth. And I believe that God is so pleased with us whenever we see our response to his word as an act of worship. So maybe some days it is easier to sing the song out loud, but maybe the, the more appropriate worship is for me to believe in my heart that this is true. So when the enemy comes in and says, you're not loved, but for me to actually go, well, no, I'm loved with an everlasting love. And I come back with that truth. And I really believe that that pleases God because our faith pleases him. So allow you allow um, your worship to be to come against the lies of the enemy and to speak back with truth. Allow yourself to be saturated in his word today. I just want to finish with this. This is a quote from Stephen Furtick in his book, um, Crash the Chatterbox. Sometimes we have to take ourselves to the worst place, don't we, in order to let God minister to us. I just want to read this over you and use this as a prayer. You can't be afraid to stare into the pupils of the possibility of pain and see it for what it is. Pretending it isn't there or couldn't happen is like popping a pill but putting off surgery. The key though is not to stay down too long in the potential pain of that would or what if. It's like being at the bottom of a pool. You can only hold your breath for a few seconds before you drown. The goal is to assess the fear but obsessing over the fear will choke you. So I just want to finish by praying some of these truths from this particular page over you. I pray that you would know that God is the cornerstone of your life today. I pray that you know that even in the worst circumstance that you would know that he is your protector. I pray that he would lift your head high today, that he would restore your joy, that he would give you peace, that he would lead you into triumph, triumph, that he would um, breathe new life into you and that he would draw close to you and send angels to comfort you. I pray that the God of all hope, the God of all peace would enable you to press the mute button on the enemy's lies today. Amen.